I'm Jay Horton. I make movies that make money. This is how. If you want to learn how to make more money with your indie film, subscribe now. Today I'm going to tell you how you can use the quick release method to make more money with your indie films. In the old days, for filmmakers, the thought was, we'd spend six months to a year on a project, and that one project would float us till we got on to the next project. But for small indie films budgeted under $100,000, those days are pretty much done. Unless you're extremely lucky, your back-end numbers on movies like this just won't do the trick anymore. And with budgets that low, the upfront pay can be almost non-existent for the creators. Some filmmakers turn to freelance stuff to make ends meet. I know I did for a long time. But there are others, myself now included, who have figured out how to make ends meet solely off the films we're making. What's the trick? Well, there are several. But today we're talking quick release. And yeah, just like the title, you basically just have to release more movies. You have to make them faster, and you have to make more of them. In indie publishing, and I'm talking books here, there's a common strategy amongst self-publishers called the quick release strategy. Basically for them, it's releasing a new book on a monthly basis, or as fast as you can. In general, with indie film, your movie will make more money in its first 90 days of release than all the other months of that first year. Now, everyone and their uncle will have a, but my friend's movie did better on month six story. Or, uh, it took my producing partner's movie a year to build up momentum and then it did really well. Yes, these things do happen, but these examples are usually outliers. By and large, most little indie movies will never do as well as they do in their first 90 days. With that in mind, you can see how important it is to release another movie while you're still within that new release window, so that your returns can stay consistent. Many of you will be thinking about the old faster, cheaper, good paradigm, which basically states that you can have two, but not all three. You can do a movie fast, but not cheap, and it can still be good. Or you can do a movie cheap and take a long time and it can still be good. But you cannot do it fast and cheap and it still be good. And this is not wrong. And I'm not going to get into the weeds arguing over what makes a quality project. That's a subjective argument for another day. Look, I know plenty of filmmakers that I consider to be my creative betters that are earning way less than I am. So why is it that I make more? For one thing, I make movies fast. I release them fast, and then I move the f on. I stopped making movies out of ego, just for me, a long time ago. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's still a component. I am passionate about what I make. But I now create with an audience first mindset. And for anyone that says, well, that's not how real filmmakers do it, go read a f interview with Spielberg. I take a movie that I want to make, I ferret out an audience in need of that project, and then I fill that need. Now, this is easier for me than some in that I have really broad tastes. I really just love movies. All kinds. I'm not just a drama guy, or I'm not just a documentary guy, or I'm not just a horror guy. I like to watch all different kinds, and I like to make all different kinds. And it's that broad and unconditional love of cinema that allows me to jump genres and formats in filmmaking to fill different audience needs while still staying true to myself. So for anyone out there that says that I'm a sellout or I'm just in it for the money, f*** you. In order to make a living off your movies, you don't necessarily have to jump genres as much as I do. Well, it doesn't hurt. But you do have to put out new movies on a regular basis. So how do I apply this method? I started out in the documentary space about a year ago. I quickly put out several feature-length documentaries in several different genres. I looked at how those were performing. I looked at quality, marketing, timing, etc. Then I looked extra hard at the ones that were performing well and started concentrating more on repeating not necessarily the genre or the idea, but the techniques that led those projects to success. 
Then over the next six months, I increased the number of my successes and minimized the number of failures. Now, I'm not saying to just rush content out with no thought of quality or execution. No. In fact, if you just throw shit at the wall, it won't work. Just putting a movie out won't do it. It has to be good. And even more importantly, it has to fill an audience's need and expectations. So how do you do that? Well, that brings me to the 80-20 rule. I stumbled across this while researching self-publishing. I think I first read about it in Chris Fox's book, Right to Market, Deliver a Book That Sells. The 80-20 rule, it comes from the Pareto Principle, which states that 80% of your success comes from only 20% of your actions. Or more simply, we do a lot of busy work. This has been proven true in so many areas that it's pretty much a universal given at this point. Most successful people are able to identify the 20% of their work that is really important and they concentrate on that, thereby minimizing the 80% that's not so important. Market research is one of those 20% activities. Shooting your movie is a 20% activity. If you want to be successful, you have to carefully examine everything you're doing. What 20% of your actions are actually contributing to your success? Now, I just read an interview with one of the editors of Crip Camp talking about how they spent months focusing on their tone. And don't get me wrong, it's an incredible movie, and I'm really glad that stuff like that exists. But most of us indie filmmakers, we don't live with the luxury to spend months figuring out our tone. If we don't finish our films in a very timely manner, we're dead in the water. And again, I'm not suggesting that we just crap out inferior work. I'm just saying that we need to cut the fat and be more efficient. I believe it was Robert Shute that said, you should strive for excellence, not perfection. I don't know about you, but I can't afford to act any other way. And I'd be willing to bet good money if those exact same editors on Crip Camp were forced into a position where they had to get that edit out in 60 days flat or not provide for their children, they'd have got it done. And it still would have been fantastic. If you want to learn how to make more money with your indie film, subscribe to my channel now. But whatever you do, keep making movies.